Welcome to the GCN Racing News Show. Coming up this week, who is the best cyclocross rider of all time? We're comparing the heavyweights of the sport. Before we get into today's show, we want to hear from you. We love an epic montage at GCN Racing, but we want to put one together containing all of you. If you haven't seen it yet, check out this amazing bunny hop video by Tom Mayusen on a recent game of bike with Jeremy. The Iceman has always been one of the most technically gifted riders on the circuit. He's cleared 80 centimeters in the past. So get your clips of you practicing your bunny hops and nailing them or not like John here in Japan. You can upload them to the cyclocross section of the app or via the uploader at gcn.eu forward slash upload. Okay, on to business. The Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup took to the iconic sand dunes of Coxida for round five. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado took her first World Cup victory after making it into an all Dutch leading group that also contained Lucinda Brand, Inga van der Heiden, Yara Kastelein, and Anna Marie Verst. After a great battle with Brand, it came down to the minutest of details on one of the sand sections, with Brand then overcooking it and going down on a turn close to the finish. On a day of comebacks, Alicia Maria Arzufi carved her way back through the field to finish eighth after being in 33rd position. What did we learn from the men's race? Well, we learned that Mathieu van der Poel basically doesn't need a favorable grid position or to have obstacles to overcome to take victory. After a third row start and being delayed by a crash on the first corner between Nicolas Kleppe and Tim Malir, he was in about 38th position. By the end of the first lap, he was in first and that was about it. He gave us another veritable masterclass in sand riding to take his 33rd straight cyclocross victory and his sixth straight win of the 2019-20 season. One of the rides of the day though was from Chris and Freestas Tim Malir, dead last after his crash and in the region of 35 seconds down and in need of a new bike, the Belgian road champion set about making his way back through the field and was locked in a great battle with Tom Pidcock for ninth, with Malir getting the better of the Trinity racing man on this occasion. It's this ride though that in my eyes gives Tim Malir GCN Rider of the Week. World Cup leaders Katarina Nash and Eli Isabit retained their leads in the World Cup standings overall, but Nash now has Anna Kay snapping at her heels. Isabit could only finish 13th on the day, while Van der Poel, after missing the first three rounds but winning the last two, is now in 17th spot. Next up for the World Cup is another of my favourite courses at Namur on the 22nd of December, while our next live GCN racing broadcast is the new Urban Cross from Kortrijk on Saturday, which is the next round of the DBV Trophy. As it's cross season, we thought we'd poll you guys to see if you agree with our selection on who might be the greatest cyclocross rider of all time. Now, when you watch cyclocross these days, you'd be excused for thinking that the dominance of Mathieu van der Poel is something new. Well, it's not. Another wonder kid was dominating the sport in a similar manner back in the 1960s and 70s. His name was Eric de Vlaming. Born in 1945, de Vlaming was from Iclo. He had a younger brother, Roger, who went on to be an incredibly successful road and cross rider himself. De Vlaming won his first cross title in 1966 at the age of just 20, and it was the start of an incredible career that netted him seven world titles, four Belgian titles, and 201 career victories. He only missed out on the 1967 title because his bike was damaged during the race. He led a high octane lifestyle, to put it mildly, and it got him into a fair degree of hot water both on and off the bike, and there's many an urban myth surrounding him. Next up, it's the cannibal from Bar. When I first started commentating, Sven Nace was the daddy. I've been lucky enough to call some absolute belters in my career. Sven crossed the line first in many of them. 294 wins, 500 podiums in total, a figure that seems too neat to be true, but it is. He was so consistent, dominant, there's that word again, but in a career spanning 19 seasons between 1998, when he turned pro for Rabobank, to 2016, when he finished his career, a year didn't go by where he didn't win a race. His final season, it was the Coxsider World Cup. He was a phenomenon, there goes that word again, but he only, and only, won the world title twice. Sorry if that sounds odd, but from his super consistency, you would have expected him to have won more. Third rider on our list is current cross and pretty much everything else sensation, Matthew van der Poel. His dominance again, people say is boring or damaging the sport. I wholeheartedly 
disagree. Mathieu is a breath of fresh air. He's doing what female pros have been doing for years, racing multiple disciplines and being successful. Pauline ferrand Provo held the crossroad and mountain bike titles in one season. Code Mathieu became the first male rider to do the same. He came pretty close in Yorkshire at the Road Worlds and he's targeting the Olympic mountain bike title in Tokyo. But I'm focusing on cross here. In the 2018-19 season, he won 32 races, including the National, European and World Championships for a second time. So far in the 2019-20 season, he's won seven races from seven starts, including defending his European title. And let's not forget the unbeaten streak of 33 cyclocross races that he's won in a row. He's not lost a race since October 2018. Going on wins alone though, he's got some way to go before he surpasses De Vlamink and Nace with 116 career wins to his name so far. But considering the fact that he's only 24, there's plenty of time for him to catch up. Understatably brilliant, I'm including Sana Kant. I've followed her throughout her career and commentated on many victories. She is a pure cross rider. 10 times Belgian champion. Before that, she was three times junior champion, three times world champion, and has finished on the podium six times. She has got 141 career victories and 247 podiums. A rider who many see as the greatest of all time and not just in cyclocross, yes, it's Dutch woman Mariana Vos. Mariana has been at the top of the world since she was 18, really. That was the year she won her first elite European cyclocross title. She was junior road world champion the year before this in 2004 in Verona. The world elite championships was hers for the first time in 2006 at 19. She also won the road championships that season as well. She's worn that rainbow jersey and cross seven times in addition to four road titles so far because she's still only 32. In total, she's had 116 victories and 201 podiums. Now, it's up to you, get your vote in for your favorite. You can do that on the GCN app, which you can get now. This is our short list. Would there be others who you would have included or who would have made the long list? Moving away from cyclocross now, after the Olympic road race course for men and women was criticized for the difference in the severity between the two, you would have thought that someone might have flagged up that the allotted place is available for each race to prevent a similar reaction. Unfortunately, no one got that memo at the UCI. For Tokyo 2020, there will be 130 men and 67 women on the start line. 67, my mind is boggled yet again. As you can see in this tweet from Catherine Bertine, who also wrote an impassioned article for Bicycling Magazine, there are many others who are also baffled. The women's road race was introduced in 1984 at the Los Angeles Olympics. There were 45 riders on the start line, so, in 36 years, the sport has apparently only developed enough to give an additional 22 riders Olympic opportunity. Let's not shy away from this. Winning the Olympics is life-changing. It can and does set a rider potentially up for life. So why are the women being denied that opportunity? There are in the region of 200 spots available to be allocated. It's time that these should be split 50-50 between the men's and the women's road races. Do you agree? We'd love to know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. The Ross makes a welcome return to the UCI calendar in 2020, established in 1953 and won by our very own Simon Richardson in 2009. The race lost its title sponsor on post after the 2017 race. It was kept alive thanks to a reserve fund the following year, but the 2019 edition was canceled due to a lack of funds and no title sponsor but it appears to be back next year, albeit in a slightly shorter format than the usual eight day stage race. On to some transfers and retirements. Something that seems to be coming the norm now, Team Ineos have signed young Spanish rider Carlos Rodriguez on a four year contract straight from Alberto Contador's Cometa development team. He will skip the under 23 ranks going from junior to World Tour. We've seen this in other sports such as football for a long time and it does mean that teams can control their race program, monitor their development and make sure that they're not being over-raced by having to battle their way through third division Conti teams. 
One of Great Britain's most respected riders, Steve Cummings, announced last week that he's hanging up his wheels. The 38-year-old turned pro with Lambeau credit in 2005. Like most British riders of his generation, he was initially a member of the Team Pursuit team on the track, taking silver in the Athens Olympics. And he was also a world champion in that discipline before carving out a career for himself on the road. He finished having won 17 races, including two stages of the Tour de France, a stage in La Vuelta and many more besides, including his home tour of Britain in 2016. At 39, Italian Daniele Bonatti also announced his retirement. He was one of 20 active riders to have won stages in all three Grand Tours. Turning pro in 2002, he was a formidable sprinter in his day. He recorded 52 victories in total, the last of which coming in 2016. Enrico Gasparotto has changed nationality from Italy to Switzerland in time for the Olympic Games, a practice which is not that unusual in cycling where riders have switched allegiances largely to open up doors of opportunity which may otherwise stay shut. It's as old as the sport itself. The winner of the Tour de France in 1907 and 1908, Lucien Petit Breton, switched from being Argentinian to French at the start of his career in an era where races routinely lasted for 24 hours. Now, if you're looking for something else to watch and if you want to know what it's like to ride for 24 hours, and if you also like seeing Hank in pain, then you can watch him on another epic ride with Mark Bowman by clicking the link on your screen now. I know you won't be disappointed. Before we go, if you're liking our limited edition Black Friday range, it's selling fast and you've only got a short time to get yours at the introductory offer price before it expires on the 4th of December. You can click the link on your screen now to order if you want to. Don't forget, subscribe to GCN Racing, hit that bell icon so that you're notified of our live races or when we upload something new. Thanks for watching, have a great week, I'll see you soon.